fun and easy DIYs are my jam and I've got three to share with y'all today. I'm so glad we have warmer weather here in Texas and I hope you're ready to create something fun. I know I am, so let's get started. On this channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. I'm using some scrap cardboard and I'm using a terracotta pot to trace out a circle. We're going to make a super easy rope basket and the size of your circle will determine the width of your basket or I guess maybe like the circumference. Um, I mean, either way, the size of the circle is how big your basket is going to be. Grab some nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I'm using the decorative nautical rope. And if you didn't know, Dollar Tree carries a couple of different kinds. One is called nautical rope jute, and the other is decorative nautical rope. One is slightly thicker than the other. And I mentioned this because depending on what you're making, the size difference could be noticeable. And if that's important to you, keep that in mind. I cut off the end of the rope that has tape on it, and then I add some hot glue, and I very carefully kind of spread it around, the hot glue around the end to kind of keep it together. You just have to be super careful, you know, or better yet, wear those protective fingertip things so you don't burn yourself. And then I bend the end um, and kind of pinch it together. I add some more hot glue and I kind of pinch it together to, um, to the rest of it. And this is how I'm gonna start the base for the basket. And I'm trying to decide where to place it I know you think, you know, just put it right smack dab in the center, but as you'll see in a minute, when you wind it around, it gets kind of off center. I mean, it's centered, but what well, you're going to see <laughs> what I'm talking about in just a second. So just put a dab of hot glue down and then press it down and hold it. And you'll start hot gluing the rope down. I just put hot glue on the cardboard and I try to make sure that the rope is laying flat. And I make sure to hot glue all the way around and I kind of put it on the cardboard but also on the bottom edge of the rope that I'm gluing next to. I don't necessarily grab um, like glob it on or anything but I put enough so I feel it's going to stay. And as you can see the rope isn't perfectly fitting the circle and that's totally okay. I'm sure there's some kind of math equation to make it work perfectly but I don't know what that is and um, but it's working out. So that's that's the important part. Now you're going to flip it over so that the part you just created is the outside bottom and then you're going to start to go around the edge to build it up. And I try to be more careful with the glue on this part and put the glue more on the inside edge so in case it drips you won't see it as much on the outside. And I just try to take it slow and steady. I mean there's no prize for finishing fast or anything like that. And when you're at the end of your rope, I mean literally, <laughs> I add some hot glue to the end just like I did at the beginning and kind of glue it down. And I do this so it doesn't unravel. And then I take another strand of rope, cut off the taped end, and do the hot glue on the end trick. And I continue building up the basket. I only did two strands of rope, but for yours, the amount of rope you're going to need will depend on how big you want your basket to be. To finish this off, I'm using some faux leather to make a little handle and I cut off a strip the length I want and then I cut it in half and I cut it in half again because it still felt a little too wide and then I bring the two ends together to kind of form like the head of the awareness ribbon and I hot glued those together and then I hot glued the handle to the basket and I wrapped the jute rope around another time because I kind of wanted the handle to be embedded in the basket. You kind of see what I'm doing. And this is how it turns out, y'all. Super adorable and very budget friendly. I added some leftover styrofoam into the basket and these cute florals from Pop Shelf to finish off the look. Let me know what you think. Moving along to DIY number two, I'm going to be making a little stuffed pillow. And I'm using some scrap leftover from some other pillows I made that you'll see in another video. But um, look at me trying to measuring and make sure things are kind of like even and stuff. <laughs> but um, you glue right sides together and I am using fabric, um, fabric glue so that it'll stay like liquid stitch or whatever. So then I open it up kind of like a, almost kind of like a quilt looking pattern, except now that I see it, one end of that isn't straight. But anyways, whatever, we're moving right along. So I am gluing all around and I'm making sure to leave a little opening at the end so that I can flip it inside it out, stuff it, and then glue it together. I'm telling you that because I don't show it to you. <laughs> but anyway, this is how it turned out. Super cute. Um, I, I just like, it's giving a pop of color in the, the, the ladder hanging thing that I have. I'm fixing to show you. Hang on. So this wooden blanket ladder is something that I made a long time ago. I just used some, I think one by twos, and then the rungs are actual branches from a tree. 
and I just kind of decorate it with blankets and just some other decor. I kind of use it as like a like a really large tiered tray in a way, but not so much little things on there, kind of bigger things. Anyway, I like how it looks and I think it turned out super adorable. I told y'all these DIYs are super fun and easy to make. So now I'm gonna make a new sign from for my front porch and I took this tag sign it has um, that cork on the middle on the other side and I, I bought it a long time ago but it came out of the um, what do you call it nautical section anyways kind of measuring off where I want the colors to be look at me even using a ruler trying to make it <laughs> as straight as possible so on one half you can see I already did um, the color maize and I end up not doing that. But anyway, on the other half, I am staining it with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. I'm brushing it on and then I'm taking a scrap cloth that is damp and wiping off the excess. Now I colored it, I colored it. I painted it maize, the maize color on accident. It should have been white because I'm making this a honeycomb and the way I cut out my stencil, you'll see in a second, it needs to be the other color. So now I'm taping off the center and I'm using way too much black paint. I actually wasted a lot of black paint because this was an acrylic paint versus a chalk paint and this just is like more liquidy or something and I definitely did not need that much paint. So anyway, I'm just kind of painting it and wiping off the excess. I probably should have put it back into the bottle. That would have been more thrifty, but that's not what I thought of when I was doing this. I got this honeycomb pattern from Cricut and it was it was one of the ones I paid for the membership thing so it was one of those that was you know normally you'd pay 99 cents for or something but I got it free because I have the membership thing anyway cutting it down to size and because it's just going to be going over that white part and I am measuring it on I'm taking my favorite paper transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl and I'm going to transfer it on to the white section. Here we go. Once you once you start pulling it off, it's super easy because it's all attached together. And then you just put it on there, rub it in, pull back the transfer tape. And now I'm adding a layer of the white that I used earlier to kind of act as, because I'm gonna be stenciling on. And so I wanted to make sure that the yellow that I'm adding doesn't bleed or bleed as much and so I'll have crisper lines so I'm putting a coat of the same coat that is the base coat now some people do Mod Podge I try to do the same color paint that I'm already going to be putting that I already had as the base coat <laughs> wow words are hard today so after you do that now I'm going back in with that little sponge brush that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm just dabbing on up and in an up and down motion with that beautiful yellow color it's maize it's but it's a waverly color waverly chalk paint and i'm just going up and down up and down making sure i'm covering it as completely as possible and then now here's the tricky part when i went to pull this up this did not pull up as easily as i was thinking it was going to pull up i'm having a pick at it and trying to be careful not to you know like pick at the board too much and i'm just going little by little piece by piece. It did not come up all in one chunk or anything like that. It was a little bit of a process. But I finally got it pulled up and it looks really cute. And then I did this decal that says home sweet home. And now I put that on the black part as you can see. I ha I found these bees also another Cricut membership thing. And I just thought they were super cute. Could I paint them myself? myself? Absolutely. Did I? No. I just made the decal. And then I'm like coloring it in with paint and I'm making the bee body yellow and then the head will be black and I'll put a little dot for the eyes and well one eye that you'll see and I'm also like doing the wings in white and then I'll go back later with some black paint and kind of make some wing lines I guess you could say just so it's not just like plain white wing white wing <laughs> true story white wing is a brand um i think it's white wing of tortilla mix anyway now i'm making a messy bow and i'm not super great at bows but i'm just laying down you know random colors of ribbon in a crisscross pattern mostly focused on black and white ribbons and then some yellow ribbon that i got from dollar tree oh dollar tree had easter on clearance so i got that for whatever half office of dollar 25 is <laughs> I can't think. What is that? 75 cents? No, that'd be $1.50. Anyways, so then I glue it to the top 
And this is how it looks. I put a, I change out the little sign on my front door wreath and I usually change out the florals too. This is how it turned out y'all. Super adorable. I mean, I mean, I, I'll, you know, I'll fight you on it. It, it's super cute. It does just go with that. It's super cute. So once again, I hope you found that these were fun and easy to make. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or something, my handle is Our Great House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye.